That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Encounter, the second film directed by Michael Pierce, which premiered at the Telluride Film Festival before going on to uh, Toronto and BFI. Uh, it is being released December 10th, 2021, courtesy of Amazon Studios. This director? Michael Pierce. He's British. What has Michael done? Uh, his first film, which I actually liked uh, well enough, uh, was Beast in 2017 with Johnny Flynn and Jesse Buckley, which had a nice kind of... Lady Macbeth, the William Oldroyd film, uh, and Stranger by the Lake vibe to it. All right. The basic story, Riz Ahmed plays a character named Malik. Mm -hmm. Malik is a Marine Corps veteran. He's suffering from PTSD. He thinks aliens have invaded Earth, but it's all in his head. However, as a result of this delusion, he kidnaps his children because he's divorced from the mother. He kidnaps them and goes on this road trip, attempting to, I guess, save them from aliens. Ultimately, he's caught. Um, at one point, he does drop off his children because he realizes he's wrong. But the older of the two sneaks back in the car with him. So there's a final sort of showdown with law enforcement that results in the two of them sort of giving up and being apprehended. The end. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. This film... Feels like a cross between like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, mm -hmm. Bug, the William Friedkin Ashley Judd movie, which is I like a lot, and Jake I could rewatch it actually, it's good. and Jacob's Ladder, the original, the original, which I also really like, but I don't think is as good as any of those. Not by a long shot. It's it's a film that feels like it feels like there's nothing innately wrong with it. It just to me, uh, felt very underwhelming because of all of the, the all of these familiarities. Yes. So there are some, there are several things happening because one is sort of the character study of Malik and his PTSD and the psychosis we're witnessing. But it's we really don't dig into it much, and really the only we understand very little about him except what the law enforcement agents are telling us and his parole officer, who's played by Octavia Spencer. So I think she's my favorite part of the story. I think she is the best part of this. She's the most interesting because yes. it's a different element. Yes. And I really wish like the story, the narrative would have focused more on her, like witnessing this man thinking that the world's being invaded by aliens from her perspective. And we do, we, we, we get the most from her character as far as like how she feels about it. She feels guilty that she didn't recognize he had such a problem. Um, so there's that. Then there's like, I mean, it's an alien invasion movie, but that is very flimsy. It's very flimsy, and if you were to watch it a second time, it's it's even more evident that this is not uh, what's really going on. But the film does try to play with our uh, perspectives a bit, and it's about the half hour, 40 minute mark where you, where you realize like, oh, this is in his head for, for certain. So the opening, we see like a comet or a meteor crashing into Earth and then some microorganism invading something and then breaking apart. So obviously it's going to spread like a, it's a parasite. It's, it's over the opening credits. Yeah. But it's that just looked like something from microbiology class, like looking under a slide. But I, within the first five minutes, thought this can't be right because Malik doesn't seem well. Like we see him in his living space and it's it looks like someone who's. You, you described it as Joe's apartment. That, yeah. It, that it, Jerry O'Connell movie. Yeah, it, it just doesn't seem like someone who's uh, sort of in a good place mentally would live in a spot like this. But also, we get footage of, like, violence and rioting in a city. And immediately I was trying to read what it said. Like, oh, aliens invade Denver or something. But it just says, like, there's a violent protest. So to me, immediately, it's like, oh, well, there. this is all made up. Right? And then sure enough, as we meet Malik and realize that he is a veteran who seems like he's probably suffering from PTSD, it just evolves from there. So the whole alien invasion thing I thought was weak because even after it's made clear that this is probably not right, we still get glimpses of him thinking he sees aliens. Yes, and there's, there's an imperceptible, imperceptible shift that happens when he... And it's at the point where he realizes he has to drop his kids off and let them go because he really ostensibly has no plan for where he's bringing them to safety and that, that the film doesn't rightly uh, kind of paint for us like how does he realize that it's in the children's better interest to actually drop them off and when he initially calls Octavia Spencer uh, like he, he says to check on his ex-wife so he it's like he kind of knows that they're fine 
Uh, there are just things that don't add up because we don't really get into what exactly his psychosis is. And in Rizmet's performance is fine. Uh, I think he does a good job. I'm glad, you know, he's been around for a while and has done great work in Nightcrawler. You know, this is fresh off his Oscar nod for Sound of Metal, which I know you didn't see, but he's really excellent in. Uh, so... I do think his performance is one note in the sense that from the moment we meet him, he seems fragile and unstable. But and I kind of wish he would have presented earlier if... if if the gag is supposed to be there is no alien invasion, I wish he would have just presented a little more sound. I think there would have been more room for characterization if we hadn't kind of fooled around with making it ambiguous about the aliens at right. first. Like, just let us know that he is suffering uh, from delusions uh, and we could explore different facets of him. Which is why Octavia Spencer seems automatically so much more interesting, and even though she's in such a limited capacity in this. And Octavia Spencer is also, you know, she's really good at channeling sympathy. Yeah. Uh, and she's she's excellent at doing a lot with a little. And, and it, that's evident here. So it's an alien invasion movie. It's a character study on this veteran with PTSD, this uh, parole officer. It's also, I, I guess you call it like a suspense thriller in the sense that law enforcement is attempting to catch this man who's committed a crime. And even that feels flimsy because... He, Malik, is very blatant, like flagrant with his actions. Like he's just out here stealing cars. He's brutally attacked a cop who attempted to pull him over and then assaulted another man whose home he broke into to steal his car. And we don't ever get a sense of where he thinks he's going or what he's going to do. So it's like, obviously, this is not going to end well. Right. There is no chance that this person is going to achieve anything. Right. So I found that component of the story disappointing. It, it's a, that's a little frustrating. But what, where I was most invested emotionally is probably feeling for Octavia's character, whose name is Hattie. Uh, Shout out. Well, I won't say that. Uh, when she's confronted by these, uh, the FBI that or whoever's searching for him, Shep, played by Rory Cochran, and the way they're kind of patronizing and demeaning towards her, and all that's also supposed to give us exposition. And then you get a glimpse of her at a bowling alley with presumably her husband, which really is more emotional than anything else in the film. Yeah. Um, okay, just going down my notes. So there isn't a lot of tension as it relates to like Malik evading cops, except the initial interaction with the law enforcement agent. And then there's a scene where after Malik assaults the officer, what his the older of his two sons is sort of like daydreaming and has like a nightmare i guess about that cop because he witnessed his dad beating up the cop and the cop uh at one point we see him like pull out a tooth and throw it out the window <laughs> i did like that scene um but speaking of the boys jay and bobby the older boy i really like the younger boy he's cute i thought he was adorable i thought he uh like his acting and his sort of handling of the lines worked really, really well. The older boy, I think, is okay. I don't think it's his fault. I think the lines he's given, and I wrote down several, like him repeating things his like dad said, like, are aliens reproducing inside mom's guts? Or it's like being a prisoner in your own body, like trying to explain the aliens to his little brother. It just felt a little contrived. I think they're trying to showcase how impressionable he is as the older uh, of the two siblings and how, and how this is going to be much more... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's going to have a greater effect on this boy's psyche than the younger sure. kids. Oh, uh, the way I think you could describe this is a trauma drama. Yes, that's a good word for it. Um, when we first meet uh, Hattie, when she goes to Malik's house, the music that's playing is like this menacing music. I thought that was funny. Um, and then speaking of music, there there's interesting use of the song Hip Hop Hooray by Naughty by Nature uh -huh. and then Against All Odds by Phil Collins. And then a Selena Gomez track. Right. So that's, in, like, I mean, they spent a little money on this music. Yes, which they did. seems interesting. Um, Jed Kurzel, Kurzel, who's the brother of Justin Kurzel, the director, is the, okay. the composer of the film. Um, and it was shot by uh, Benjamin Krakun, who did Promising Young Woman, also Beast for Michael Pierce, and Monsoon, which we uh, reviewed. But okay. uh, f this film d wasn't as visually distinct as any of those. Um, no. Even, everything just felt very cliche uh, in narrative as well as visuals because even the chase uh, through the desert uh, of Riz Ahmed, that felt like any kind of 80s Spielberg alien related film or Thelma and Louise even. And Octavia Spencer is almost that, and Shep maybe a little bit are kind of that Harvey Keitel 
kindly law enforcement aspect. But I don't have anything else. My last note was that this film is a PSA for gun control. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted them to more explore in greater depth the family annihilator. Uh, oh, that's right. The FBI introduced the idea because uh, Octavia's character is saying, no, I know him. He's a good guy. He would never hurt his children. He loves them. And then the FBI agent says, actually, um, if you really look at his profile, this man like checks all the boxes for a family annihilator. And that was a popular topic a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I even think that would have been a really interesting angle had he done it or had they really suspected that he would do it. But yeah, that... Hmm. What would you give this film? I'm lukewarm about it. I would give it two and a half out of five. I think two and a half is fine. It, there's Again, there's nothing innately wrong with it, but it just felt... And how it's being presented during award season, I think I was expecting much more. And considering I like Beast a lot. Yeah. Anything else? No. Bye.